Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Today Apple announced iOS 18 and what caught my attention is they copied most of the new features straight from Android, which reminds me of what they did with iOS 14. Android also copies Apple in many ways, but today it's Apple's turn, so without further ado, let's jump in. Let's start with the lock screen. iOS 18 will allow users to change the lock screen shortcuts, which is a feature we got with Android 14 last year, and One UI have it for even a longer time. On Android 14, the number of options is limited with no support for third-party apps, while on iOS 18, they mentioned that third-party apps are supported like Snapchat, for example, which is similar to what you currently get with One UI. So that's it when it comes to the lock screen. Now let's make it a little bit more exciting and move to the home screen. Finally, with iOS 18, now you can place all your icons wherever you want, which is something you can do on Android since forever. That will give you the freedom to organize your apps and widgets in a way to enjoy your wallpaper instead of having it completely covered. They also copied Android's dark icons, widgets, and folders when you activate dark mode. With Android 12, we got Material U theming, which gives you the option to change the classic app icons into themed icons, then it changed their colors to either match your wallpaper or pick one of the available color options. iOS 18 now offers the same exact functionality for your home screen. On Android, the color palette you choose will be applied throughout the whole OS, including your keyboard, quick settings, and apps, while Apple didn't mention if it offers the same, so let's wait and see when iOS 18 gets released. Moving to the control center, that's basically Android's quick settings, but looks fancier. With iOS 18, now you have two extra sections for media controls and home devices, Android gives you the same controls on the same page instead of being separated under multiple tabs, which will require extra steps to reach certain controls when compared to Android. But I will keep my final verdict until I try it myself. The other things they copied are the power button at the top right corner that we have at the bottom right corner on Android, the ability to add new controls and reorder them in line without the need to go to settings, which is the best decision they have ever made. And finally, the ability to add third-party app controls or tiles, which always been the case with Android. The only new thing they did here is the ability to resize your controls, which is not possible on Android or the previous versions of iOS. Next, lock an app, which is the ability to lock specific apps and opening them requires biometric authentication, plus any info or notifications related to this app won't appear anywhere else. A lot of Android phones manufacturers offer the same functionality under different names like Samsung's secure folder. Google will release the same functionality with Android 15, calling it private space. The only difference here is on iOS 18, you can lock the same app that you are currently using, while Android's implementation creates a separate copy of this app before securing it. So I prefer iOS 18 implementation as it's simpler to use. They also added the ability to just hide apps in a separate hidden folder under your library. Now let's talk about messages. With the previous versions of iOS, tap back was only limited to certain number of options, but with iOS 18 now you can use any emoji which is the same thing you can do with Google Messages for a while. They also copied the ability to schedule send your messages. Moving to the mail app with iOS 18, your emails will be automatically organized under different categories to make your inbox clutter free, which is the same feature we get with the Gmail app, and they named the categories exactly the same. But Apple took it a step further by creating a digestive view that pulls together all relevant emails for easier interaction, with the ability to recategorize your messages manually if needed, which is missing from Gmail. Moving to AI with iOS 18, Apple decided to join the crowd with its own set of AI features with a lot of similarities with Android, which I'm really excited to try and compare. Like the cleanup feature to remove unwanted objects or people from your photos, which is the same thing as Google's Magic Eraser. The ability to summarize emails, articles, and notes. The writing tools to proofread or rewrite whatever you want in different styles. The ability to generate images and emojis and many more. Most of these AI features are pretty much the same ones offered by Google and Samsung, but what impressed me is the native integration with the chat GPT. Now Siri can take your command and get you answers powered by the most advanced AI chatbot, which I'm sure it will be much more powerful than Google's Gemini. Talking about Siri, we should expect a lot of enhancements and the new features that Gemini offered for a long time, like the ability to use text and voice commands, Context awareness so you can ask follow-up questions about the same thing without the need to start over. They also talked about how Siri will be fully aware of all the information you have on your phone, which will make it easier to locate files or information even if you don't remember when and how you received them. 
In photos, the AI will make your search easier by giving you the option to describe what photos are you looking for, and the AI will try to figure it out for you. Similarly, Google announced in the I.O. event something called Ask Photos, which does pretty much the same thing. They even announced the ability to create highlight videos from your gallery using a command prompt, which is something I didn't see on Android yet. So these are the top features Apple announced for iOS 18 and how similar are they to Android. As expected, every year we see the same thing happening on both sides, but the only problem is Apple is always late to the game. So that's pretty much it for today and you should expect a lot of side-by-side -side comparisons in the future between iOS and Android to see how they stack against each other, especially in the AI. But for now, thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.